After the abolition of slavery in the Caribbean, three waves of Indians came to Belize. Indians first touched Belizean soil in 1858 when 1,000 ex-soldiers along with their families came as deportees after rebelling against the British in India's first war of independence. A second flow consisting of 3,000 voluntary Indian laborers migrated from Jamaica to Belize in 1872 to work in sugarcane, banana, and lumber industries. About this same time, a third flow of East Indian coffee workers moved from Guatemala to settle in Toledo. Today, we now find descendants of these immigrants in Toledo, Corozal, and Belize districts who make up about 7,000 persons, 4% of the multi-ethnic population they now face the imminent danger of disappearance as an ethnic group. What we have here is the Dalgotna, carved from hardwood. This was also an everyday use, a tool used in the kitchen. The Dalgotna was used to mash the peas to get it thick and creamy. This is a swizzle, which was a, an equipment used in the kitchen for what would be used nowadays instead of the blender. It's made from a solid piece of wood and it is used in making the spit peas or the dal smooth by spinning it around like this. This kneading ball was a very, very important equipment in every Indian household because it was used on a daily basis for kneading the dough for the roti and bread. The basic and the main use was for making the dough for the roti. We had to do this three times a day because our people like their roti three times a day. But it was also used as a cutting board, especially when it was time to cut up big pieces of meat or lar large quantities of vegetables. This was pulled out as a cutting board. It was also used as a cooling rack. When sweets would be made, it would be placed on this for cooling. And when this is a greater, they used to call it cool greater. But I didn't like it because we are not cool. It. What we have here is the coolie grater, made from an old piece of cutlass or machete, used for grating of coconut. It was very useful on an everyday basis. Girls and boys, but especially the female, had to learn to use it. Mainly that the coconut milk and oil was used in our everyday cooking. While the oil was used to chonka with onion and garlic in our famous chokas, such as karaili, tomato, baigan, and cornfish. The coconut oil was also used as a form of medicine, especially in the warming and in those herbal coughs. The oil also was used as hair treatment and as a skin lotion, which gave a bright, shiny, smooth, silky skin. This iron fat is a very, very important equipment in the kitchen because it was used for cooking. It will keep warm for a long time. This the one here and this handle here, that where we rub the masala, which that they um, the herdy, the onion, the garlic, a piece of a banana put in it. And this was used for most of our cooking. And to preserve it, you use a little bit of vinegar. Or our ancestors before didn't have any vinegar or refrigerator. It was placed in a coconut shell and put in the sun to dry. Previously, also the elders did not eat, eat much meat, 
so in place of meat, we, we, they ate and we also had a lot of greens, vegetables. The mansa used for junking lags. They used to file the lags with the axe, then cut it up in pieces with this saw. Uh, two person used this saw. Uh, we used a lot of wood for the wooden house, for furniture, no gasoline, no electricity. So it was environmentally friendly. This is an application that was made by my grandfather for 600 acres of land. As he was a farm man, very much involved in farming. And same way his children and grandchildren followed his footsteps. This picture depicts a uh, very important aspect of the East Indian um, family life. Each female was taught how to sew. Hail me and he tell me Mary I'll give you this bangle. Well, I remember Rani Sashi and she tell me that I should always wear it because it keep away sickness. And sometimes I get sick, show one different color, black.